Hello and welcome to part two of converting this Stella fridge into an egg incubator to hopefully hatch out some quail and duck eggs. That's the plan. So when you last saw it, this was just hanging down with cables everywhere. So I've done a quite a bit to it since then, but I'll talk you through exactly what I've done. But most importantly, what I've done was wire up, I've checked all the wiring was all nice and tight, taped it all up, put this back up, and then I actually ran it to make sure, well obviously the most important thing is that it will reach temperature to incubate the eggs, which it reached not a problem. So I tested it again with just one of the light bulbs in to see if it would reach temperature. It just about made it, it was probably about 36 degrees, but it was really, really cold when I was testing it last week, but it's warmed up no end. We're on 12 degrees. This time yesterday, I think it was minus two. But um, I think as the weather warms up, one bulb would hold it if one blew in the middle of the night. So I'm happy with that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through everything else that I've done to it because it's changed rather a lot around the back. Because like I said, I wanted to keep it. There we go. Look at that. So yeah, I'll talk you through exactly what all this stuff is on. But I have, like I said, just got my one plug that I plug in the wall, sort of. Okay, so basically what I've done is got a normal extension lead, uh, a five gang one. I don't think I needed five, but I'll put a five gang one in the back here and I've screwed it down because I've wanted to keep everything nice and tidy. So obviously we've got the main power that comes out the back of the fridge from the controller, which is around the front of the top. So that comes in and then it's literally just plugged straight in here. Uh, and also we've got this here is uh, what I've done is I've kept the drain uh, the drain hole in the back because of the condensation from humidity and stuff which I've not really tested properly uh, and I've literally just hot glued that onto a little cup so that it will fill up in there and then I can just take that off and empty out that's the plan but what I've got here then is obviously here is the controller switch for the fan inside so it's set really low so obviously when it's in its home I can reach around and if I need to turn the fan up and down, nice and simple. And then obviously that's plugged in down the bottom. And then we've got this bright cable that runs all the way up here. I'll show you. Uh, that is basically an internal light. I'll show you in a minute what I'll put inside. Because uh, if you remember, I was going to have the internal light in the fitting at the top. But I did actually find a bulb in the end for it. But the trouble was the bulb, not, not the bulb itself, but the actual bayonet, the, the, the metal parts get really, really hot. And all the extra cables that I put up inside to do with the temperature controller unit, I was a bit worried that them cables were too close and it was too hot. So I've decided to put a completely different light fitting in the back, just so that when it comes to hatching and obviously the light bulb click in and out, it's a bit dark. So I want a permanent light in there, which is not a heated bulb. It doesn't emit any heat at all so that if we can record and I can see when they're hatching out. So that's what that is there, and it's just a simple on off switch whenever I want it. Now this is a Sonoff TH16. I had this on my last incubator. Basically, it's a smart switch that works with if this and that and Alexa and stuff like that. And it's got its own temperature and humidity sensor, which is inside, uh, inside the incubator as well. Now what that does is on its own, it work just with the humidity sensor and then in the app I can monitor the temperature and the humidity from up in the house. I could do that with my, my wireless uh, temperature sensors that are up the house anyway but I couldn't monitor humidity which is obviously just as much as important as the uh, temperature itself when you're incubating. So this will allow me on the app to see what the temperature is and the humidity inside the incubator from anywhere or if I'm out of work or up the house, not a problem. But it's also a smart switch as well, which you can set, and I've had this done before. So if the temperature spikes above, say, 38.5 degrees, I can then plug in, which I've got, and I'll show you, I've got a little siren alarm, which is attached to the shed, and I can also do an if this and that and send the signal up to the house to set alarms off up there. So that's what that is, nice and simple. I think it's only about 15, 10, 15 pounds for that. But again, it's all nice and neatly on here, plugged in down the bottom, everything just out the way. That's how I like it. So that's basically what I've done. Obviously that's the fan going down there, which I can unplug if I need to, but I'll keep the fan running. So yeah, back inside then. So you can see that is my light fitting that I've put in to have light in here so we can see when they're hatching out. 
uh, which is obviously like I said that you've got the little switch on the back that's the temperature sensor from the th16 smart socket so that does temperature and humidity uh, this is the main uh, this is the main temperature sensor. This goes up to this controller and obviously that's set at 37.5 degrees. When it hits 37.5 degrees, these light bulbs will cut out. And then when it goes down to 37.1 degree, the light bulbs will cut back in. And obviously the fan just runs as it is. So I'm still unsure about the egg turner. I've not heard back from them yet, but I think I will be having it. But I've also bought another, so basically I've got a big tray for water, which will go in the bottom. And I've also got a smaller tray for water, which is gonna be sit right underneath the eggs. Now, if I get the turner, brilliant. And then when you lock them down with three days to go, the turner has to come out. So I'll take the turner out and I've got, picked up two of these, these little, what are they? They're like little draining board mat things. And they fit just in there lovely. So that will go in there like that. So that they obviously, when they hatch, they don't fall in their feet in through the here. And I'll cut the other one in there and I'll probably cable tie this straight down onto this tray. So <laughs> that's basically the ins and outs of the incubator. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll show you where it's gonna live. I've built it a new home. And I'll also show you the, the, the one thing I have to do is when I plug it in, I just have to quickly, I'll show you on the back. Come on. It's nice and light as well, it's lovely. So on, on the Sonoff sensor, so basically these are going for the siren, which is on the bench, I'll show you over here. So I've actually made, I was uh, out at work the other day with my friend Jordan, and this tongue and groove was packaging material for a log cabin. So I grabbed 10 lengths of it, brought it home, put it on there, sanded it all nicely, because that's where it's gonna live, up there on there because basically what it does is to the lights at night because it's such a bright incubator with a big full glass door the light bulbs in and out in and out at night is quite it lights it up quite a lot so it's gonna be facing away from the house so it will just shine against the back of the shed so it's literally gonna sit on here it fits nicely lovely perfect exactly where I want it and then just plug straight in here and then boom it'll start working straight away the only thing like I said I have to plug in to the sun off in the back is a live and neutral again little flathead screwdriver just push the pin down put the wire in push the pin down put the wire in and that goes to a sensor which is on the outside of the shed so let's get it all put up here get it all on and I've got to concentrate now getting the temperature and the humidity levels bang on before some quail eggs arrive in a few days. Took off. all plugged in up and running so what I'm gonna do is leave that to let the temperature get up to where it should be and I'm gonna stick some water in see if we can get the humidity exactly where it should be want to get around about 60% on the humidity uh, on the dry run it was very low it was down about 10 but obviously I had no water in there whatsoever so let that get up to temperature whilst I'm doing it I'm gonna cut these cable tie these to the top shelf and then that can go back in and then if I do get the turner I can put the turner on top just straight on top of here and then I can take the turner out when I don't need it because I should be able to just feed the wire straight out of the back into a plug I'm not sure how it's going to work if I get it I think I might actually have to get a digital timer so that I don't obviously I don't want them turning the eggs all the time just as and when so yeah I'll get a digital timer so it'll turn like for 30 seconds or one minute and then not do it and then do it again an hour later probably once maybe every two hours or something for the duration until they get locked down or take turn out so yeah i'm going to cut this to size i think it's pretty much straightforward um so yeah i've actually just waved goodbye to my van as well like i said it's going to cost an absolute fortune to fix it uh but i've actually sold it to my friend and he's going to fix it and use it so at least it's going to go to another home and not on the scrap heap but i just couldn't justify paying the amount of money to get it fixed so i've just decided to not and use the minibus instead 
but um, yeah I finished the fence that I was doing the other day uh, with the gates that's all done now just waiting for the uh, the sparky he's gonna come round uh, well he's gonna go round to the house and he's going to um, uh, do the automation of the gates and then when he's done that I've got to pop back round there dig in the armored cable for the gates and uh, in front of the fence the customer now wants some uh, some kind of shrubbery to cover the fence. So I've suggested probably laurels because they're evergreen and they're nice, but it's just getting a price which I've got to ring up and get a price for them. And then, um, yeah, should be all good to go. So yeah, put that on there, get a cable tie in a few places. Doesn't need to be much, it's not gonna move much. It's quite sticky on there as it is. So I'm gonna get that done and then get that in there and go and get some water. just a matter of leaving it alone and letting it get up to temperature and see what our humidity is doing as well uh, it's not far off already this one but obviously the other this one goes up this controller goes up really quickly but what I'm gonna do is do one final thing which is what I've done last year with my incubator with this temperature sensor is glass of ice water pint glass full of ice and then filled up with water drop the probe in it at least an inch two inches inside make sure it's not touching the outside of the glass and this should read zero because it's water and water freezes at zero so gotta go and get some water right so time to do the ice water test so I'm basically I might, I might do actually get uh, that should be right right so this has been sat now for a couple of minutes so this is now gonna go in here and I'm gonna put the probe in there Make sure it's not touching anything. It's got to be straight down the middle if I can. Okay, that is just sitting right in the middle of the ice water. You can see, obviously, that could be flickering because of the Hertz rate frame. I don't know. But it's already gone down six, 4.8, 4.7. So it should get down to zero. Obviously, it's a bit warm in here because I've had the bulbs on, but this test shouldn't take that long down to three degrees 2.8 just notice there that that light bulb is cracked so i'm going to change that one out straight away and also the me light bulb at the back there so i can do my switch remember hey so it's just having an internal light on to see stuff going on 1.1 0.9 let's get in there i'm happy if it's gone down to about where it is now i'm more than happy that it's uh, reading pretty much where it should be 0.7 come on you can go lower 0.6 0.5 0 0.4 pretty good pretty good trouble with having so many different temperature sensors in here you get different readings out of all of them like the one on the app is reading 38.2 I've not looked at these two yet, these two at the back, the wireless ones that got to the house, because they take so long to actually get to where they want to be. So uh, yeah, 0.3. Discrepancy of 0.3 degree at the minute. Let's just move it around, see if it makes any difference. Make sure it's not touching. Hello, I think. So get it shut now, get it up to temperature, get the humidity looked at now. That's the important thing. I want 60% humidity. Right, that has now been set running for about three hours, untouched. I've not opened it. Uh, I did briefly earlier when I first started to clean the glass and tidy it up a bit. A bit dusty on the top already. And that has now sat uh, 37.5. That one's reading 37.1. Humidity is around about the 55 to 60%. I want to try and get it up higher, so I'm going to put some more 
right at the back there I can fit some more water trays in so I'm gonna stick some more water in and hopefully get it up a little bit higher because then when it comes to the lockdown of the eggs I want to bump it up even more to around about 80% humidity so I need to make sure that I can get it up there without having to keep putting in hot water all the time but I'm um, really chuffed the Stella Bater is born and ready to go. All I've got to do now is wait for some eggs, which um, I've ordered six eggs off eBay and I uh, messaged the seller because I wanted to know if they'd done a deal for 12, which they said, look, if you cancel your order, have a look, there is deals for 12. So I thought, well, I'll just stick to the six for now. Uh, but they since emailed me back and said, right, we've shipped them and we shipped you six free eggs as well. So I've got 12 quail eggs coming to test the incubator and then we'll get onto the expensive mandarin duck eggs and that's what it's for. So fingers crossed, it works. It's gonna do its job and hatch some eggs out, which I'm, I'm really chuffed. I'm really, really chuffed with it. It looks really smart. It suits it in here and it's, um, yeah, yeah. Shut up, Ben, just shut up. Everything is working. It's doing exactly what it should be doing. When I first plugged it in, uh, when I first put the water in, it did set off the siren that's outside because that uh, smart, the Sonoff TH16, it uh, it does like to bump the temperature up really quickly when you've put water in there and it set the alarm off outside. So it works once it got over 38.5 degrees, set the alarm off so I can hear it. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Everything's all wired in, it's all tight. Just to mention, um, when I, done the wiring for the temperature controller uh, a couple of people have mentioned if you look back at the diagram uh, there is a cooling side I didn't mention that because there is no so just ignore that it was just the heating side that was for this the light bulbs to cut in and out you can obviously use these in uh, like home brewing for lagers and beers and all sorts of other things so you can have a heating and a cooling if you want but just ignore it on the drawing it was just for the heating side of it so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, next video should be with some eggs going in and then we'll see how they get on. So if you uh, like this video, then please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, set your preferences to all. Don't forget to like the video because that will tell YouTube that it was a good video and they will show you more of my stuff. If you would like to contribute towards the channel, there's links in the description for PayPal or if you want to become a patron, you can do that down there as well and I'll be grateful forever. So thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.